Hey everyone, welcome to Lady Overlander Radio. Tonight our guest is Jerry from Timbo Tusk. Stay tuned. Grab your favorite drink, whether it's a coffee, cocktail, or tea, and get ready. It's Ladies Night on Lady Overlander Radio. Lady Overlander Radio is brought to you by Artemis Overland Hardware, The Moore Expo, U.S. Action Tracks, and Adventure Trail RV, maker of the Overland Shower. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> How you I can help but keep dancing after the music. I can't. <laughs> it makes me happy. Yeah, I still need to edit that one, though, because we still have to add our two new sponsors, Midland Radio and Timbo Tusk. So... Hi, Ta-da. Jerry. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for having me on. This is exciting. Oh, it's <laughs> awesome. We're we're Jerry's first official real live podcast. He told us. So kind of feel like we're kind of cool. <laughs> we're in the cool kids club. Yes. So um, before we get rolling into the show, I wanted to take a moment and talk about the Lady Overlander Radio Camping Retreat and uh, the location that we're going to be having that. So I just found out, I got word that Gypsy Camp and Canoe, where we're holding the camping retreat, just um, suffered severe flood damage. What was it? A week or weekend? Last weekend or the weekend before, I think? Um, the so, weekend before. Yeah. <laughs> so um, their buildings, I've been there um, touring the property and their buildings sit pretty far off the river. So that the Illinois River went over its banks quite a bit. And these are their brand new remodeled bathrooms they had just done. And uh that's their office area. He's ripping out um, sheetrock. Yeah, sheetrock there. Mm-hmm. That's pretty. Mm-hmm. They, they got hit pretty hard. Uh, we're still planning on having the camping retreat there. They're working very hard to get everything back up and running, but they are going to be having another cleanup day this Saturday. So if you're in the local area there in Salem Springs, Arkansas, please come by and help out. I think they're going to get kicked off around 9 a.m. local time. So yeah, I, I know they would greatly appreciate that. Yeah. <clears throat> So other than that, um, next week, we're going to be rolling into Kentucky to the Daniel Boone Back the Byway event. And that Friday night on the 20th at 7 p.m., we're going to have a ladies fireside chat. It'll be right at the big uh, campfire area right outside of the general Mm -hmm. store. So if you're going to be going to Daniel Boone Back the Byway, come on by and hang out with us. Other than that... Uh, we have Jerry on tonight and we're going to be chatting about some new products he has and what things he's going, he's got going on and where he's going to be this year. So I know he's got a full schedule as well. So welcome to the show, Jerry. Well, thank you. (laughs) And, uh, if you don't mind, just take a minute and give everybody a little background on yourself. Well, you know what? I've been doing overland stuff for a long time. Uh, it's new here in the States. You know, the last 10 years, uh, Overland has just gone nuts. It's really gotten big. Um, 1984, um, I was a little younger, just mildly. Uh, <laughs> I did a uh, an Overland, a real Overland trip from uh, London to South Africa, through Africa. Nice. And uh, we uh, used a, a Bedford, uh, ex-Army Bedford truck took about four months to go through uh, through Africa. And uh, I'll tell you, saw things, did things uh, quite amazing, beautiful. Uh, actually, a lot of lot of parts of Africa can't go to today. Uh, it's just too dangerous. And there were places there at the time that we couldn't go as well because it was too dangerous. But uh, it was uh, a, a fantastic uh, trip to do at, uh, I think what, I was 24 or something like that. And, um, and then came home had to uh, get back to real life, and uh, I uh, became a real estate broker and did that for about uh, 25 years. And then um, a few years ago, I decided about, well, 12 years ago now, um, I couldn't find stuff on, on the market. I was trying to outfit an FJ60 uh, mm-hmm. to be for overland, you know, with rooftop tents and uh, everything that I needed and a fridge and whatnot. And it was hard to find. Uh, no, there was just no, uh, nobody was selling the gear that I needed. 
and uh, and we I decided you know I I had this little fridge and uh, turns out they're heavy, uh, and I wanted a slide so that I could use it, but I had a I had a uh, uh, a drawer system in the truck, and I thought, well, you know, every time I got to use it, I got to pull it down, and uh, you know, open it. And uh, my son at the time, uh, you know, of course, you have a fridge; they're in it every five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time he needed to get in, I'd have to pull it off the shelf, put it down on the tailgate, and I thought, God, I'm going to hurt myself. You know, these things are heavy. And I thought, I, I need a drop-down slide, and um, yeah. tried, tried to get one in, in Australia. They uh, they uh, they had one would not sell it to me, would not ship it to me. And uh, mostly because the, the cost of shipping was about twice the cost of the slide. And they just assumed that I, uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. And they were, they were more or less right. I was like, I can't do that. And so I started tinkering and, uh, you know, kind of uh, started building one in my, in my garage uh, and uh, um, eventually you know, figured out uh, that, hmm, maybe I've got something here and uh, got a patent on it and uh, went to my first expo in uh, Overland Expo in 2010 and uh, kind of haven't looked back since. Uh, we started doing flat slides. We started doing camp tables. And uh, then about uh, 2015, we uh, introduced the our uh, Scottle grill kits. Mm -hmm. And um, and really, we haven't looked back since because it was really a hobby up until that point. And, uh, you know, I've since retired from being uh, in real estate. And this is really a lot more fun. Real estate <laughs> was uh, good for, uh, you know, it's a good business to be in, but it wasn't any fun. Uh, and I was in property management, which is even less fun. Yeah. Uh, and because uh, nobody's happy. I mean, the, the residents aren't happy. The owners aren't happy. The, it, it just doesn't matter. You can't please anybody. And we were stuck in the middle. But now everyone who walks in the door, they're going camping. And, and they're, they're happy. happy. <laughs> and, uh, and they're buying something that they want and they leave happy. And it's like, oh, this is, this is much, much better. And uh, so I, I'm enjoying this now. Yeah, I know the real estate market in California was on fire for a very long time, and it may still be. I'm not sure, but you know what? Yeah, California is a funny place. Uh, you know, as as much as bad as it is, there's it's and you know as bad as the business environment is, as bad as the politics are, and as bad as everything you can hear on on TV or or on the internet, it's still a pretty good place. I mean, real estate um, you know is expensive. But it's the first place to recover from a recession and the, uh, the last place to, uh, to go down when there's a recession. So yeah. um, we recover quickly and, um, and, and, and we don't go uh, as far down as the rest of the country. You know, we're, we're fairly diverse. And, uh, but if we can get our politics together, it would certainly be better for the rest of the country. <laughs> I know. I was stationed in uh, Petaluma at the training okay. center for the Coast Guard. And... I just, it's so pretty there. All we did there when we were stationed there was hike and hike and hike. I mean, we had very young children. We'd put them in a stroller and we would just hike. We'd get outdoors because we didn't have a lot of money and we didn't have a lot of other things to do. So whenever we weren't working, we were outdoors in California because the weather is so nice. You know what, the weather's, you know what, middle of winter, I, I'm, uh, you know, the difference between winter dress and summer dress is the color of your t-shirt. Um, <laughs> and and that's, and that's it. You know, it's a white T-shirt during the summer and a dark T-shirt during the winter. And uh, that's something that's hard to, that a lot of people don't understand. I mean, it could be January and we're outside working on our trucks. Uh, we're you know, literally in a short sleeve all year round with a, an occasional, you know, if it gets down to 50 degrees, I mean, we complain. Uh, yeah. We don't, we don't, with the world, is, you know, the, the sky is falling in if it gets down below 50. That's and, the same way in Florida, um, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do the same thing. Yeah, and uh, so it's it's just funny the way you know you look at the rest of the country and they're 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 buried for a good part of the year and it's like all the toys get put away and uh, until spring, and uh, you know we don't really think about that very much. Yeah, that's true. So you've been in California your whole life, or have you, uh, yes. you originally from? Some, okay, so you're you're originally from my, uh, um, uh, yeah, I am originally from California. My uh, my parents immigrated the year I was born uh, from Canada. So you can see I have a strange last name. It's French. And uh, so my family came from uh, Montreal. 
and uh, we spoke French in the house. And uh, I uh, unfortunately don't have a lot of people to speak to anymore, so the French is getting rough. But uh, but if I could spend uh, you know a month in Canada or a month in France, it would come back nicely. Yeah, I took I took French in college, and it's embarrassing how little I remember of the language. It's hard, you know, really if sad. you don't use it, it. I mean, like I say, I grew up speaking French, but because I have no one to talk to, you lose it. It yeah. it goes away, and uh, so it's not it's not surprising that uh, that you don't remember it. It's it's just you don't use it. That's true. Well, Got to use it or you lose it. I know that's. I mean, it's the same with any language, even sign language. I took sign language in college as well. And I remember very few signs. Well, language also evolves. Uh, you know, the funny thing is I was in France uh, a few years ago, and I had no trouble understanding everybody. Mm -hmm. However, I couldn't understand TV. Uh, you know, they speak on TV. They seem to speak a little bit more, I don't know, posh. And, uh, and everything was, I, I, I couldn't keep up. With the uh, with the speed of the language when it was spoken on radio or TV, but in person it wasn't a problem. And and my my accent's kind of funny. I've got a old Canadian accent when I speak French, so they kind of they kind of laugh at me, but they still <laughs> understand me, so it works. Well, people laugh at my accent in Arles too. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't, you didn't have an accent, be no fun. So exactly. So what you got going on lately at Timbo Test? You got any new products you're launching? Well, we do. You know what's funny? It's uh, it, they, they come in bunches. And you guys have one of those new products uh, that uh, we debuted at the, the Moore Expo, uh, which yeah. was our uh, our basin table. And uh, what, uh, thank you. What, uh, you yeah, know, we've had a camp table for a long time. And uh, I don't know what took us so long, but uh, this year we decided, you know what, we're going to put a basin in it. And because uh, uh, it's just, you know that much more useful, and uh, so we we showed it off at more, and uh, and got good reception, and we're mm -hmm. we're happy with it. People are buying it, and uh, and it still works with our old with our existing table. They just hook together, or you can use it by itself. And uh, and we also introduced uh, like like a lot went on this year. I don't know what uh, we probably had a lot to think about during COVID. I think that's what happened. Yeah, and, yeah. a lot of design time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. And uh, we got a new do-it-yourself slides um, because we make flat slides. That's something that people don't know. You know, they're, you know, we have the sexy scottle and everyone thinks that's all we make. And they discover that we make first slides. They go, oh, I didn't know you did that. It's like, yeah, that's how the company started. I think but, that's what um, I said to you at more. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, I get that a lot. And it's like, yeah. that's because, you know, God forbid we'd actually market every, anything else we do. Uh, mm -hmm. But the scottle kind of uh, kind of takes center stage, and uh, you know people cook and they show their food, and uh, it's kind of exciting. And whereas the slide is kind of boring, it's functional. It's not more sexy, yeah. Yeah, not sexy at all. <laughs> but um, I mean, we make slides for all the fridges, you know, uh, from the 35 all the way to uh, 110 liters. So, uh, and uh, we make the side poles. I think we're the only one that makes side poles. Like the vans yeah. like side poles. They use those a lot. Mm -hmm. But we made uh, do-it-yourself slides this year, which uh, we're, we kind of aimed at the motorhome market. But it turns out, the, again, the van market or even the overland market is uh, interested in that. Because oftentimes the slides that we have might not be the exactly the size that they need. You know, maybe they want to put a toolbox or they want to put something else. And uh, so our ready-made slides don't, you know, don't fit. So mm -hmm. they can buy the, uh, the do-it-yourselves. They're, they're nicely in, in, you know, they got a base unit so you can bolt them down. Then you just build your own uh, platform, make it as big or as small as you want, or, you know, size it for your vehicle. And, uh, and, and you you know, you go from there. And, uh, and then we, uh, and of course, yeah, you, know, you saw the fire pit. And, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, that's so a quick uh, yeah, picture in, of that. Yeah. Nice. I you know, stole that picture. The thing is with the fire pit in California, and I think this is spreading around the, the country a little bit, we can't have regular fires. They're, they're literally prohibited. You can have mm -hmm. propane fires, but not uh, wood fires. And yeah. you know, to me, if you go camping and you don't have a fire, you go to bed at eight o'clock and it's very boring. You know, you can put a candle. <laughs> And you'll drink till 12, but
But if you don't have anything, you know what? You go to bed at uh, at eight o'clock and uh, and you call it a night. So you know what? Put a little propane fire pit. You stay up all night. I'm so it you. just makes it more fun. It does yeah. It does. We do have a question from Jared. He wants to know: Do you still have the original prototype of the Scottle? You know what? Um, we funny you say that. We my friend uh, has has that original one. Uh, my friend Paul and. Uh, so yeah, he has the original. He helped me build it, and uh, but uh, and then I think uh, some people uh, MS Overland uh, has uh, two originals, or, or the first ten, and so does Frank from uh, Outdoor Four By. Uh, they were the first three people to uh, to purchase, and they were uh, quite uh, you know they were still a little rough at that time, and uh, they still have them, so. Yeah. That was kind of fun. We love ours. Oh, yeah. Love it. Goes everywhere. Goes everywhere. So you, you have... At least you get fed. Exactly. Well, that's the thing is, you know, everybody's into... You see all these great videos about all these meals these people make and, you know, like... The for thing, example, Marco. Yeah, Marco. Well, Why don't Marco's we talk about some of the people that you got that, you know, you, you sponsor. You have Marco. You have how many other... Um, YouTube names to you. Well, there's uh, uh, Marco and then uh, 395 uh, Junkie. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's a, a few others, but those are my main. And, yeah. um, and you know, they're local uh, to me. We camp together. And, um, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're good friends. And, uh, and, I, I, and it's great that they know how to cook. I've camped yeah. with both of them. And, you know, my cooking skills are... You know, uh, you know, I can defrost food. Uh, I consider <laughs> my my uh, my scottle to be my outdoor microwave, and uh, so I'm lucky to feed myself. So you know, I go out with uh, Marco or or Daniel from uh, from 395 Junkie, and it's like they they're amazing what they can cook. And oh, yeah. the funny thing uh, about the scottle, you know, the it originates, or at least the you know what we're uh, uh, what we have originated in South Africa. My, my wife's from South Africa and we, uh, we had uh, a South African made one for, you know, for ages and eventually it stopped working and uh, the plastic bits, you know, were degrading. And uh, we thought, ah, one of these times when we go visit uh, family back, uh, back in South Africa, we'll just get another one. And uh, we go back there and uh, they're uh, a little more Americanized than one would think because you could, we couldn't buy a camping one. Uh, ah. You could only buy a backyard one because it it had to do five different things, not just one. And it was like 75 pounds and, and the size of a backyard barbecue. And it's like, oh, that's not what I want. I want a camping one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we came home disappointed. And that's essentially, you know, we decided to uh, to make our own. And uh, and that's what we did. We made our own, you know, and, uh, and, and now – you know, we were surprised, you know, we went to a camp event and, you know, people just started taking pictures of it. And, uh, you know, we started making them, you know, we made 10 at a time and they would go, and then we'd make 20 and they would be gone before we finished. And then we were making 50 at a time. Um, and then we were making 500 at a time and we couldn't keep up. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, really started in the garage. And uh, I think we're in our fourth shop now. Uh, wow. you know, just kept outgrowing the shops, and even this one is uh, is, is starting to feel the the pain of uh, overloading. So, but we'll would, we'll be in this one for a while. So, would you say your the Scottle is your hottest item, hands down? Uh, it, it is, it is. Yeah. And uh, but you know, it's good to be a little bit diverse, diverse, like we, you know, with the slides and the camp tables and and so on. Um, and we have actually, I didn't mention, we have one more product that, uh, that we just came out with. It's kind of aimed at the van people. It's mm -hmm. a bike slide. Um, oh yeah. I saw that on your website. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we're, we're still not done putting up the pictures. We've got a double bike and a single bike and it's designed to go inside the van because, uh, the, uh, the bike people seem to, you know, they, they've got these beautiful bikes, beautiful, expensive bikes. And they hang them outside in the, uh, you know, in the weather. So yeah. um, we thought, yeah, I'm sure that they'd like to maybe park them inside the van, keep them out of the weather and prying eyes. And uh, so 
we've got that uh, and we're starting to get a little bit of traction on them. Uh, people are starting to see them and, and we're like, say going to a few van events and seeing what, uh, what, what the, you know, that industry is looking for. So what is the slide into the back or it slides into inside the van wow. so that you can pull the bike all the way out, take your bike off, put it back on, then slide it in. So you don't have to kind of crawl into the vehicle to, uh, to bolt your bike into the inside. Uh, it just gives it easier because you can deal with it outside and, and then push it back in, close the door and you're done. Very cool. I feel yeah. like that's for people that are like solo travelers. <laughs> Well, you know what? It'll be either solo or couples. Yeah. Um, you know, the vans aren't that big. And typically, you're not going to have a family of five in them. Um, you know, they're I normally one never. or two people. And uh, and then they, you know, they go from there. Um, so, you know, we may make a triple or, or, or a quad uh, slide. But for right now, we'll see how these go. And, Very uh, cool. See what turns out. Very nice. So where did the name Timbo Tusk come from? Well... Way back when, when we got the first slide, which was the, the drop down, and uh, we were all sitting around the, the table going, well, what are we gonna call the company? Because we were like a few weeks from uh, the fir our first Overland Expo, and we you know, we needed to, to have a company name and get a website up and uh, uh, you know get uh, you know stickers and paperwork. And uh, sitting around going, well, you know what? You, you pull the fridge out of the, out of the vehicle and, and you kind of bring it down. And you know I had my arms out like this going, and I was thinking, it's kind of like an elephant tusk where you, you grab the fridge, pull it down, put it on the tailgate, pick it back up and uh, back in the vehicle. And so we thought, oh, well, you know what? Uh, elephant tusk, that's a good name. But everyone kind of looked at me and went, yeah, that's really a mouthful. That's not going to work. And then my wife goes, well, wait a minute. I'm from Africa. And uh, elephant in Swahili is tembo. And uh, so what about tembo tusk instead of elephant tusk? And we all looked at each other and went, oh, that sounds good. And then uh, we had a, a friend who was helping us with the design. You can see it in the background, mm -hmm. who uh, you know, designed the our logo. And uh, really, the rest is history. It just worked. And uh, so we, we've got a, a really cool logo and a great sounding name. And, you know, it's, it seems memorable. People uh, people remember it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we go, you know, we do that. Yeah. They remember Tembo Tusk and they remember Scottle. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> no, I do. I do like a lot of your products and I love the back to the basin table that we were talking about that the newest, yes. one of the newer things that you've released recently. I like that. So we, we carry collapsible little basin yep. like that to do yep. dishes. So I right. love that that's, you know, high, in, you know, at a right, at the right height to be able to use. I love that your tables connect together. I think that's one of the coolest features of them. And, you know, I love that you can collapse that down and put the, you know, make it a regular table as well. That's really multifunctional. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can use the, the cutout for the sink. We, we organized it so that uh, you can now put it back into the hole and, uh, and it, it becomes a, a whole table at that point if you're not using the sink. Okay. Otherwise, you just pull off uh, the cutout, put in the sink. And what's nice is because the sink is collapsible, everything will fit in the bag. You know, the legs fit in the bag, the, the table, the sink, uh, everything. So it doesn't take up a lot of room in the vehicle because all of us seem to have a, an issue with room and, uh, you know, the bulkier things are, you know, the more trouble it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. I know that's one of the things we struggle with is there's a lot of really cool products out there, but, you know, yeah, you can only have so room. much. Yeah. Um, yeah. You probably find, uh, you know, you want to buy everything, but... Mm -hmm. You know, there's only so much room and uh, after a while you discover what works and what doesn't and you kind of pare down until, uh, you know, like you say, you go on a number of camping trips. If you don't use that one item, maybe you don't need it and okay. uh, pull it out, make room for something else. And uh, and after a while, you know, you've got a, a nicely outfitted vehicle and uh, you're good to go. Yeah, my daughter, my youngest daughter and I are getting ready to hit the road again and eventually join my husband and my son out west and. I'm going through that this week. I'm kind of going through my vehicle saying, okay, do I really need this? Did I use this last time? Right. It's really that important. You know, it's one of those things where you're like, wow, maybe I will need this. Maybe I won't. But mm -hmm. most of the time, if I haven't used it in the last six months, you know, being out on the road, almost completely full time, 
it's gone. It's just not, yeah. the room. there's no room for it. There's no room. So, and if you're not using it, you're not using it. Uh, and I find uh, drawer systems work well in a vehicle. Yeah. Because you've only got so much space. You put it in the drawer and it stays organized. I, I'm relatively disorganized. So what if I have a drawer system, everything stays where it belongs. And if I take it out, I put it back and uh, my truck doesn't get cluttered. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when I first started, I used to use the, the bins and uh, I found that the bins kind of exploded because uh, everything you actually needs at the bottom. Right. And, of course. Uh, yeah. and by the first night or the second night, I mean, there's stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but once I went to drawers, uh, things had a home and, uh, and if it didn't fit in the drawer, it didn't come with. And, uh, and it's kept me fairly organized. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. And one of the reasons I, I plan on getting drawers for the Forerunner, but one of the reasons why I haven't yet is just what you were talking about earlier, which is I have a huge fridge. I have an ARB fridge and I don't have slides for it yet. I don't have like the drop down slides. So it would be, you know, because I have a lift on Hi. the vehicle and then I put drawers, then my fridge oh, yeah. is well, you know, the, really high. Well, yeah. you know what when I first started the company, that was one of the issues is that there were very limited uh, companies that made drawers mm -hmm. uh, and they were always one level uh, and uh, they were eight to 12 inches high. And, and, you know, by, by the time you open up your fridge, you can't see inside anymore. Uh, you know, if you've got slides, and that's the reason that we did the drop down. Mm -hmm. But in, in today's market, uh, there's a lot of people making drawers and they're, uh, and they're, uh, more, uh, you know, what uh, what I recommend is they stack them. Put a fridge, put it, and you know, put it down low in your vehicle, and yeah. then get two drawers and stack next to them. That way, you still have a, the same amount of drawers mm -hmm. without uh, taking up uh, the room. You know, because you put your fridge too high, a it might not clear the lip of your uh, of your opening, and mm -hmm. two it'll you can't see inside without a step ladder. I have so, a step for my Jeep. <laughs> Because I can't see in it. Let's see. I open the lid. I can't see in it. So, right. Step tool. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you can't get away from it, even if it's low. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I think the fridges as well. Uh, you know, I, I think people tend to buy too big a fridge, uh, and uh, they come from coolers. Coolers. You you know, ice takes up seventy five percent of the uh, of the space, and so you need a big cooler. And then uh, when you swap to to a fridge. You look at that tiny little box that they call a fridge and you're going, I'm never going to fit anything in here. This is way too small. So they buy a ginormous fridge. Uh, but in reality, because you don't have 75% of the room taken up by ice, that little tiny hole in the fridge is actually quite big. And it's surprising what you can fit in there. And of course, it depends on, you know, how many people are, uh, are you know, living out of the fridge. You know, right. if you've got a family, you need a bigger fridge. But, uh, but I think if you've got, if you're one or two, you know, look at the 45 liter fridges. Those are plenty big. And uh, that's true. Although I'm happy if you get the big one because I have slides for them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we that. Have, yeah, our, our fridge in my vehicle is fairly big. I think it's just like that. Yeah, but you've got a lot of people. Big, but we've you, got you, five people. So, yeah, you've but got we five still, people. You know, we have a fridge in my husband's um, Jeep as well. And he's got what you were talking about the two drawers on the side of the fridge. And that right. works really well for him. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, we still, there's, there's times that we struggle, you know, when we go grocery shopping and we're going to be out for a while, we like to eat fresh food as much as possible. So oh, absolutely. sometimes they're not enough. And sometimes you, like you said, you know, we've got plenty of room and too much fridge. It really depends so on the just, situation that, I mean, yeah. this is the beauty of uh, all the fridge manufacturers right now. I tell you, there's, uh, when we, 10 years ago, you know, you had a 35 liter fridge and that was about it. Um, you know, and, but today, um, you know, there's, you know, uh, uh, almost a dozen different sizes and different configurations. So you got something that'll work for, for any family or, uh, or any situation. So we're, we're quite lucky now. People have really, uh, you know, the companies have stepped up and, and given us a, a lot of stuff to, to look at. Yeah, for sure. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to watch a little video that I put together couple weeks ago and then uh, hear from our sponsors and we'll be right back. I'm Tony with Bats Off Road and you're Joy the Bull Petter. I am. This is Team Wild Maven. Hey, this is Josh Boss Design. Hi, this is Jerry from Tembo Tusk. Hi, we're Caldwell's Overlay. 
What's up, guys? This is Oscar Mike Overland. Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm Kara with Ozark Overland Adventures. Hey, this is Aaron with Artemis Overland Hardware. Hey, this is Chris with More Expo. You're watching. You are watching. And you're watching. And you're watching Lady Overland Radio. Lady Overlander Radio. You're watching Lady Overland Radio. Here we go. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. Hey girl, hey! Hey girl, hey! <laughs> hey girl, hey! Oh God. Lady Overlander Radio is brought to you by Artemis Overland Hardware, The More Expo, and U.S. Action Tracks. Oh, that cracks me up every time. That cracks me up. <laughs> that was funny. Just, I- that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's just that as was funny, funny as the outtake one. <laughs> oh, I've seen some of the outtakes. They were really funny. Yeah. We need to throw also, that out I wanted to make a quick announcement. Arla and I are taking over Artemis Overland Hardware. Watch out. The first Saturday in June. We're going to be running running the show there. We'll be we'll be the official sponsors of the Rigs and Coffee event there. So come by and see us in Springfield, Missouri at Artemis Overland Hardware. I'm excited about that. It's going to be fun. We're so, selling everything. We're selling it all. Everything <laughs> must go, Aaron. We're going to sell it all. Deals are happening. <laughs> He's going to kill us. <laughs> yeah, they're, going, they're all going on a big trip they, out They're going to have too so. much fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're going to be having all the fun, and we're going to be doing all the work. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But then we're, we're going to get there. a big iron. Big I'm iron. excited about that. I'll be my first time at Big Iron. Such a fun event. Such have you been to that, event. Jerry? I have not. That does look like a lot of fun. I mean, that uh, that big shovel is unbelievably big. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, it'd be fun. I'd like to do some of the events in the Midwest. Uh, like I say, uh, you know, I'm eyeing uh, Rendezvous in the Ozarks, and uh, but the timing for the for the big shovel is hard for me. Yeah. It's, so I mean, it's funny. This year, there's so many events. You know, they, uh, you know, for the last two years, there's, you know, there's virtually none. So, you know, we're making up for it by going to, you know, three times as many as we normally would. And uh, so we're, we're sprinting, you know, certainly all over the, the Western states. And, uh, and then uh, slowly, hopefully we'll, we'll make it over to the Midwest and later this year and, and the East Coast. But yeah, yeah we're I going mean, to a lot of events. They even had an overlanding expo thing in Florida this year. Mm-hmm. They had, yeah. they have. I mean, it's crazy how much there's some in Idaho that we've been invited to, and there's just a lot going on. Yeah, we're debating the Idaho one right now, and uh, if we can find uh, the time to to get up there. But you're right; it's you know the funny thing about overlanding is it's just such a cool thing to do. I mean, uh, you know, the vehicle looks great, and uh, and you get to go out into the wilderness, you get to camp, get away from uh, you know from urban life, and uh, so I can see why it's becoming popular. It's uh, you know, granted, you know, when a lot of us were kids, you know, mom and dad would take us camping. And, uh, you know, that hasn't really changed. It's just uh, gotten a little bit easier. You know, it's, uh, you know, we've got better tools now. Mm-hmm. Well, so. and I think that people are, maybe they're not surprised. Maybe I'm just, maybe I was just surprised. But I think a lot of people think, you know, you can only really overland if you go out west or you go international. And to me, there are so many places throughout the United States, you know, and, and my husband and I said, we're going to do the United States first. Once we're done with that, then we'll start going international. But there are so many historical and amazing places to see and beautiful landscapes right here in the United States that in places you would never think like we're going, my daughter and I are going through Georgia and we've got, we're going to be doing the Georgia adventure trail and hitting all kinds of historical landmarks, covered bridges, right? You know, really, really cool things. You know, I'm oh yeah, no, on- it's you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, in the West, we're we're kind of lucky with the uh, with the space that we have and and the the wide open land. But no, you go to you know the, the thing is the East Coast has all the history, yeah. um, and there's so much to see in uh, you know all, all up and down the the the, the seaboard and uh, you know Appalachian Mountains, uh, Tennessee, you know Missouri, the the Ozarks. Uh, uh, you know, down into Texas, Louisiana, Florida. I mean, there's so much to see. 
and uh, but it's a little bit different from the West Coast, and mm -hmm. uh, and but uh, not you know not any less. That's for sure. Because the funny thing is, it's you know it's always greener on the other side, and uh, you know we're here on on the West Coast. We get a little spoiled and and probably a little jaded, and we got you know we want to go to the East and see all these cool things you guys are doing. And then of course we talk to the East Coasters and going oh to see that open land, and uh, they want to go there. So. I think you find that it doesn't matter where you come from, you know, you want to go to the other side. Oh yeah. And I think that's our all part of traveling is going somewhere that you're not normally from and you know, somewhere you haven't been. And you're right though. Every time we go out West, we, you were just reminded how vast and how big it is and just all of the public lands out there that you can just, most of the, you know, like a lot of the Bureau of land management lands, you can camp wherever. Yeah. You camp yeah. anywhere. You, yeah, exactly. And it's on the called BLM land. And uh, it, it is nice for that. You can get away. Whereas mm -hmm. I know that, uh, you know, when I drive towards the East Coast, you know, by the time you leave uh, New Mexico, um, you're done. You got to find uh, organized camping at that point. Um, and uh, but that doesn't mean you can't find nice places to camp. It's just, you know, there's plenty of national forests and national parks. Uh, you know, you don't have to go to KOA. Not right. that I haven't uh, overland to a KOA before. But, uh, yeah, they do have the nicest bathrooms. They do. They do have really nice bathrooms. <laughs> they really do. Yeah. Oh, we've but done. There's, there's still yeah. so many places. I mean, there's so many national parks throughout uh, the country that uh, really you, you don't really have to uh, to go, uh, uh, you know, and say that there's no place to go. There's so many places to go. I just feel like if people are saying there's nowhere to go on the East Coast, they're not looking in the right places. Oh, no, they're not looking. Absolutely I not. I mean, I've been West and East. The only place I haven't really been yet, you know, I mean, I was stationed up in Maine and I've camped in Maine and hiked in Maine. I haven't gone up there with my vehicle and overlanded in Maine yet. And I haven't done, you know, Michigan, Wisconsin, any of those places, but I plan to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even those places, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is 99% National Forest. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so and it's beautiful. Places to camp. Yeah. So, you know, don't just get mm -hmm. your mind set on just Colorado or just, you know, Arizona or just New Mexico because. Yeah. I mean, I'm you go to you. absolutely Wisconsin Dells are beautiful. Um, you know, you go to the Catskills uh, in you know, New York, uh, you know, the, the, the beaches up and down the, the coast. Uh, there's so many different places. Mm -hmm. So, and we did the Appalachian trail one year, not the trail, but the, uh, uh, the uh, Blue Ridge uh, Highway, yeah, and uh, you know, so many beautiful places to camp all along the highway. Uh, you know, they're all national park type uh, campgrounds, but they're rural enough that you feel like you're you're you know you're out in the, in the woods. And that's something else. You know, something we don't get is a lot of woods, so it's really nice to to be able to to camp under trees and uh, and whatnot. So. It's funny because we have a small off-grid cabin in Arizona. And when we came back to the East Coast after being out there a while, I just remember going, wow, I missed all of this green. It's so green in the East. And it's, you know, it's very dry and a lot of different browns and tans and beiges and stuff on the West. But just the difference, you know, it's so cool to be able to see both. It is. You know, I, funny thing, like whenever I'm on the East Coast or, or, or you know, the Eastern United States, Every bridge I go over, I look, and it turns out every bridge is there for a reason. There's water underneath it. So <laughs> we have lots of bridges too, but there's no water. It's just, uh, you know, it's just stream beds. And uh, it's like every time I go over a bridge, I have to look. It's like, yep, yeah, there's water. And uh, yeah. so I find it's a little bit funny. And the other thing that I find kind of fun, if you go to the, to, you know, the Western uh, states and you'll see our freeways and there's big uh, uh, clover leaf off ramps and on ramps so you know, you, they're huge you can see them for miles and then you go to the uh, you know you go through you know the wooded parts of uh, of, of the eastern states and you and you can't see anything you, know, you all you see is the woods but mm -hmm. uh, you know if you take an off ramp and they're all clover leafed as well but you can't see them all of a sudden you take the clover leaf and all of a sudden you see the town it's like oh I didn't know that was there I mean I went by big cities didn't even know they were there because of all the woods. So yeah. it's interesting. It's a real difference. Whereas on the West Coast, I mean, you, you can see for 30 miles. And, uh, you know, the East Coast, you can just see just as far as the edge of the road. And that's it. So yeah, big difference. And nice to see the green. Oh, yeah. 
So have you ever been camping anywhere and something crazy happened or have you ever had like any kind of issues where you've had to think fast on your feet? You know what? We've been pretty lucky. Um, I had a bear take my backpack once uh, and uh, it, in, in Yosemite. That was, that was kind of exciting. Did he um, ask nicely? Uh, he, did, <laughs> he did. But he, he did rip every single pocket out of the backpack oh. and, uh, and discovered uh, that I had cocoa in there an unopened tin of cocoa and he ripped it up like it was paper. And uh, that was probably the, uh, the most interesting. Otherwise we've been, uh, we've been pretty lucky on, uh, you know, not running into problems, uh, you know, or, you know, whether it's four legged or two legged, we've yeah. been uh, very, very lucky. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. often more afraid of the people than the animals for sure. Cause animals yeah. will usually, Keep, kind of keep their distance and mm -hmm. they will they're more scared of you and uh, and they will keep their distance you know but you got to be smart about it you know you're in bear mm -hmm. country you know what you got to be bear smart and uh you know same uh, you know for us you know we have coyotes and things like that you know you got to not leave food out you know they're not going to come and uh, and rummage uh, in your camp if you don't leave food out that that's just common sense that's right. Yeah, for sure. We've got Kara and Connie and a couple other people joining us. That's off road. So Jared, on your Jared. Off road. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Awesome. We've just been chatting about, uh, catch you guys up real quick. We've just been chatting about a couple of cool uh, items that Timbo Tusk just came out with their basin table and their fire pit. And then we've, of course, been talking about the Scottle. So now, Jerry, I'd like to talk about this beast. Sure. Oh, yeah. look at that. Yes. Tell us about this. Tell us about yeah. your build. You know what? I'm on the road a lot, um, and uh, I needed something comfortable. You know, I, I had a, a, an FJ60 for a long time, and I loved it. Had a rooftop tent, really enjoyed it. But uh, but I needed something that had a few more creature comforts. And uh, so I got a, a Tacoma and uh, got a uh, AT Overland uh, Habitat on it. Uh, and then started outfitting it. I, you know, I've got goose gear uh, drawer systems inside, uh, and uh, I I made it so that I you know, I, I think one thing about the rooftop tent that uh, is I didn't like having to put my pants on laying down. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, That's not and, easy. And in, yeah, yeah, no. And invariably, you know, you 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 need to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. You got to put your pants on, and then you got to put your 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 shoes on to get down that rickety ladder, and uh, <laughs> it, I didn't enjoy that as much. Although I like being way up there, but yeah. the, the coming down the ladder part, I, you know, wasn't as much fun. Now, you know, I, I I can get out of bed, stand up, put my pants on. Uh, I've got a sink, I got a fridge, and uh, I, I even have a heater in there, and uh, so it's got I got all the creature comforts I need. It's very comfortable. And uh, it, it takes me about five minutes, about three minutes to open and about five minutes to close. So uh, nice. it, it's turned out well. And, and these Tacomas are amazing where they can go. It's, uh, you know, they're, they're really, they'll, they'll go anywhere. I, you know, and I'm pretty rough on it. And, you know, I, you can't get them stuck. <laughs> I'm a bit of a Toyota fan myself. Oop, there it is. All righty. <laughs> Yeah, I had an 80 series and now I have a forerunner. So I, I'm a big Toyota fan. We oh, have yeah. a cheap too, though. So. Well, you got to spread the love a little bit. Yeah, you got to spread the love. <laughs> we're, we're a house divided for sure, but both Arla <laughs> and I and my husband. But, and but, you gotta, but someone's <laughs> got to go get the Jeep when it breaks down. So that's yeah, why you exactly. have a Toyota. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did not. We just lost half the audience. <laughs> oh, nobody's watching anymore. Thanks, Heart Jerry. No, I'm just broke. kidding. <laughs> Heart broke. Hey, yeah. <laughs> no, a cheap Arla has is pretty, pretty sweet. It's a nice rig. She's, she's done a good job with that. Yes. No, so. they, uh, actually most of the, most of the, the vehicles, I tell you, it's, you can make them look so good. And, uh, oh, yeah. and they're, all, they're all so capable. It's hard, it's hard pressed to get some that are not, I mean, between the Jeeps and the Toyotas and the Land Rovers, um, you know, the, uh, they'll get out there. Well, you oh, can make sure. them your own. I mean, everything you do to it is your own touch. Oh, yeah. There's not one that's like exactly anybody. the same. Yeah. You don't want to look like anybody else's. You want your own touches. Yeah. And that's the fun thing about going to some of these events, uh, you know, like the big uh, shovel or the uh, uh, the rendezvous and so on. Sorry. What, what's it called again? I call it the big shovel. Rally. 
Brutus, <laughs> big iron overland. Big iron. Yeah. Big big iron. You, the big shovel. Like a big shovel. <laughs> big iron. <laughs> yeah, uh, big uh, ass ass all the hair set. <laughs> no, no. No, he's going to start quoting Google facts again about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, yeah. it's, uh, you know, you get to visit other people's camps and see what they've done. And uh, like I say, every camp is different. You get ideas from them. It's like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Maybe that's a maybe I should try that. So that that that's a lot of fun to to go uh, looking at what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. And I love just seeing how creative people can be. Just you know, you got your your really high end, expensive things, and you've got the big, massive, you know, run over tree kind of rigs that that are out there. Or but you've also got people that. Mm -hmm build their own, you know, things inside and out and they have such mm -hmm. a great use of space and they try like, you know, just how, kind of how you started. You saw a need, you you had a need and you figured it out and built something. And right. it's just so cool to see all of the different things that are coming out from so many people. Just, you know, a lot of them were just things that they were like, you know what, I need this. They build it and they're like, maybe somebody else would need this. Yeah, th this is what, you know? you know, how a lot of companies started. And, uh, and what's, yeah, it's what's nice about the Overland community. I mean, it's a great community. Uh, you know, the, the, a lot of the businesses, everyone talks to everyone and, uh, mm -hmm. it really feels homey and which is nice. It's, uh, it, it's, it hasn't grown too big yet, which is nice. Yeah. I mean, it's getting big, but you told me, uh, it, Expo West is like a, like Disney world, yeah. right? Yeah, it is kind of, but you know what? <laughs> What, what is surprising is if you walk around the Overland Expo, a lot of the companies are small, well, I'll call them mom and pop uh, businesses. Yeah. Yeah, I consider myself a mom and pop business. We're yeah. a small business. Uh, and uh, you walk around Expo and you will find probably 70, 80% are mom and pop businesses that are, uh, that are just trying to do something. Sure, you got the big companies and uh, you know they're, they're flashy and whatnot, but uh, but there's a lot of small companies and uh, a lot of American-made products out there, and yeah. uh, you know, a good thing to support. Yes, for sure, absolutely. And we we yeah. we try hard to have uh, we we make all of our products in our shop or locally, and uh, so and like I say, a lot of these small companies do the same thing. So yeah, good 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 uh, good to go visit them. Love small businesses for sure. So does anybody else in your family go out and explore an overland as well? Or is it mainly well, just you? No, my son does. Um, and uh, I taught him young. You know, when he was, he was born, uh, I think by the time he was about four years old, I wrangled up a, uh, an FJ40, a Toyota FJ40. And uh, we'd go camping all the time. I joined a Land Cruiser club. And uh, you know what? Uh, he now has my hand-me-down tents. Uh, he has the rooftop tent uh, that used to be on the FJ60, and uh, yeah, he he camps all the time, and he's now joined Tembo Tusk. So uh, hopefully, I'll with him here. Hopefully, I'll be able to go camping a little bit more, and uh, cool. certainly I'll be able to camp with him a little bit more, which is nice. Make him do and all the cooking. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Arla do. makes me do all the cooking. <laughs> so. Somebody else is cooking but me when we're camping. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the She's rule. Like, That's my time off. I don't. I'm not it's cooking. It's the rule. I'll, I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> no, I'll, I will yeah. say Joe does most of the camping when we're out. I mean, he just the enjoys cooking. it, so I let him have at it. Oh yeah, if, if willing. Uh, yeah, just sit back and enjoy. Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> Tony cooks. I just yeah. You go ahead. So, what's the coolest place you've ever been? If you had well, to pick one. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, that is hard. Uh, I've done a lot of traveling, uh, both internationally and uh, and uh, you know in the states. I, I was lucky in that uh, at the beginning of uh, when I started working, I I joined a, a camping tour bus company when when I was in my twenties. I was a driver, and we had a uh, we had a tour tour guide and a cook. And, uh, and actually that's, that's how I met my wife was on one of those camping trips. And uh, we would uh, start in either Anaheim or New York. And uh, we would uh, do two, three and six week trips all across the United States. 
And the most of the passengers were either Australian, English, German, South African, uh, New Zealand, all you know, either European or you know, or English based. And um, and we'd show them the states. And uh, so, you know, there was like I say, I think people don't realize a how big the states are and how diverse they are and how much there is to see. I mean, you know, like in California, you know, you can go to Yosemite, you go to San Francisco, you can go to Death Valley, uh, the Mojave, uh, all of our mountains. And then, you know, you move on to Arizona, just beautiful land in Arizona, uh, New Mexico, uh, you go into, you know, Texas, Louisiana, uh, into Florida. You can't, everywhere you go, is, there's beauty to be seen. Sure. And um, uh, so it's hard to pick one place out uh, that, uh, you know, I, like I said, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, Wyoming, Montana. Uh, an interesting trip. If you ever take a round trip, you know, round trip meaning around the United States, you know, I find that if you start in, uh, in California, go east, go all the way to the, to the coast, then go north and then back west across the top. Every day is prettier than the last day. Oh yeah, and, oh, well. and uh, yeah. If you do it in the other direction, sometimes not so much. It's, it's. Uh, but if you if you do it in the in the counterclockwise, it seems like every day is prettier than the last one. So it's it's kind of fun. And, yeah, we did um, we did the Pacific Northwest last summer, and the only the only problem was because of all of the fires, all of the wildfires. We missed a lot of northern Washington and you know northeastern Washington State. Um, Northern Idaho, that kind of stuff, because there was yeah. so many, so many forest closed and stuff, but we got to see, you know, we fell in love with Wyoming, we got to see a little bit of Montana, we're going to go back and, and hit that again. Oregon was amazing, just so mm -hmm. vast between the coast and the rest of the state, so different. And, uh, you know, it's just crazy how many, like we were stationed in California, so we've seen quite a bit of California. Uh, we want to explore some more of Nevada and s probably some more Southern California. Um, well, like I say, I mean, it's fun. You know, the deserts, you, you get to see the ghost towns and, uh, yeah. uh, uh -huh. you know, really diverse, uh, you know, uh, you know, territory. Uh, we have a highway called Highway 395 that is absolutely beautiful. Uh, you know, you can drive it from California all the way to Canada on Route 395, and it's beautiful all the way up. And, uh, you know, if anybody's doing that, well worth, uh, uh, you know, uh, trying that route. Yeah. Uh, so, and camping, you know, wild camping all the way up. Well, there's also the TAT. Have you gone on the TAT? The uh, trans. You know what? I haven't. I would love to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, I've the done portions of it. I haven't done the whole thing. Yeah. That would be fun to do. I, I need my son to, uh, to uh, um, you know, help me retire. So I yeah. can do more of that. <laughs> That's a takeover, son. It's my time. I need, I need to become more redundant than I am right now. <laughs> no, but you, you said something earlier that I wish more people, and I think a lot more people are starting to do, but you know, when you went down to South South Africa, you were 20, you said you were 24? Uh, I was in my, yeah. I, in, uh, I did a lot of traveling in my 20s. Yeah. I, yes. I, I think people, uh, you know, if you have an opportunity that you travel in your, when you're young, from 20 to, to 24, 25, uh, and uh, don't start a family until you're at least 25 or 30, because uh, yeah. there's so much to see. Because once you're tied down, it's hard. You can't. You're, you're done until the kids are grown. Yeah. Um, I mean, granted, you can still travel with the kids, but it's a it's a lot harder. A lot Your more money's logistics. a lot tighter. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, I mean, I traveled all through Europe. Um, you know, I, I you know backpacked through Africa, through uh, through South Africa. Uh, you know, took a truck uh, with a group of people, you know, all the way from top to bottom of Africa. You, you couldn't do that, uh, you know, if you're married or have kids, you know, because it's, it's you know, it, it takes too long. Uh, but if you're single, you, you do it. And we had a group of people and, uh, you know, we had a great time all the way through. And so I yeah. highly recommend you get that, you know, that out of your system, essentially. And, uh, and you've got great memories the rest of your life at that point. Even if you don't travel again, you've done it. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, well, well, well worth it. I mean, I, I learned how to ski in, in Austria. Um, wow. you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, I could have learned here, but, uh, but it yeah. was more fun to go oh, learn cool. there. 
And, uh, you know. It's cooler so. to say you learned it in Austria, though. It, yeah. it, I'm not gonna lie. it is. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's important for people to explore, especially like, for, for instance, me, I came from a small town. You know, I mean, I was born in Miami, but most of my childhood, I grew up in a very small town. And that's one of the reasons why I joined the military was to go out and see other places because I didn't sure. want to just live and die in that small town, you know, and that, that's okay if that's what, you know, people want to do. But to me, there's just, you know, it'd be hard for me to pick a place too, because every single place I go, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Look at all this cool stuff you get to yeah. do here. And then you're there a while and you're like, okay, what's the next place? What's the next yeah, place? It, I can go see? it is. You're absolutely you know? right. I mean, I think a lot of Americans don't travel enough. Um, they get stuck in a rut. And um, and I, again, I think this overlanding has uh, opened up people's uh, horizons a little bit and uh, introduced travel the, to them that maybe they wouldn't do otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and even like I say, in the states, there's so much to see. You know, get it out of your own state. Go look at the other states. Uh, you know, go to the county next door, even. Uh, yeah. And and see what's what's happening out there. So, yeah. I, I can't I've been, tell you how many times I've been to a state. And I'll meet somebody local and I'll say, oh, yeah, we were just over in this part of the state. and We saw this and they say, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't even know that was in my state. You know, they don't even know sometimes what's right in their backyard. No, no. And they've never left. They've never left uh, their area or their city. Yep. So and it's really unfortunate. Travel is, opens opens your eyes to a lot of different things. Yeah. Sure. And I mean, especially with overlanding, you can drive up into Canada you know, you yes. can drive down into Mexico. We've been to Costa Rica, Mexico, Panama, Ecuador, and there's just so many different places to see. And I think that especially with, you know, the last few years with other, everything being shut down, now is the time to get out there and just explore well, I, while you I can, think, you know. I think the shutdown has actually taught people something. Uh, you yeah. know, a lot of people say, you know, I can work from home now. You know, we're lucky. We live in, in, a, in a, an age uh, where we actually can do that. I mean, 20 years ago, you couldn't do it. Um, but no. today, I mean, uh, look what we're doing right now. You know, we would needed to have been in a studio to do what we're doing right now. Yep. And that's not practical. Uh, you know, we live on different sides of the country. But yeah, uh, I'm currently it, in Florida. You're in California and Arla's in Arkansas right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, how, yep. how, how, that's fantastic. Uh, we couldn't do that. Uh, even 10 years ago, we couldn't do that. But we live in a time that's, that are pretty interesting. And, uh, and I think it opens up, uh, you know, you can travel and work at the same time uh, because yep. we can do it off our computers. Yep. And, uh, and if you're lucky enough to have that kind of job, geez, take advantage of it and do it. Right. I'm lucky enough to have that kind of job, but it's taken me a long time to get there, you know? And that's well, it, it does. That's I the, mean, one, you, the one positive I would say, like you said, about the whole shutdown and everything of the country and the world, really, is that a lot, a lot of companies that otherwise I don't think would have tried remote work gave it a shot, you know, because they still had things to do. Yeah, so, they never would have tried it. I mean, never yeah. would have tried it because it's they're stuck in their ways and it's scary to uh, to change and expensive if it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Now they had no choice, they had to do it. And they found, and, and I think a lot of companies found that, hmm, wasn't it, this worked out pretty good. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how long it lasts. But, yeah. uh, but I think if you're lucky enough to be able to do it uh, away, you know, I would definitely continue doing it away. So I just, I feel like I'm more productive and I've worked in an office environment. I've, I mean, you know, I've worked on a ship, I've worked in a large unit and and now I'm working remotely, you know, for the Coast Guard, but as a contractor now. So, and I'm just, I feel more productive. I feel like there's less time spent, you know, chatting and going out to lunch and doing all these other things and more time actually spent physically doing work, um, which is good and bad. I mean, I, I miss the socialization sometimes of that, but, you know, I think overall I'm happier working remotely yeah. and I feel more productive. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that's probably the one item is that, you know, you don't get, there's not as much face-to-face -face or socializing, uh, you know, in, in today's world. But, yeah. you know, sometimes that's not bad either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it does allow me to, to be able to travel and to do things right. like that. So it's, you know, as long as there's a good signal, I'm good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's right. Right. Well, so tell us, what's your schedule looking like over the next few months? Well, 
like I say, it's busy. Um, we've got uh, big trade shows like the Expos are happening every two months until the end of the year. And, uh, and we've discovered uh, van shows right now. We're, uh, we're hitting up, uh, you know, uh, van life type, uh, type of shows. And uh, they're being very receptive to what we have. And uh, so it's kind of like doubled our, uh, our our show load for the year, and uh, and it's also a bit of experimenting. We've been we went to some uh, earlier this year. We went to motorhome shows, and uh, you know those those were fine, but it, not uh, not quite where we probably need to be. And uh, yeah. you know the the overlanders and the van people uh, are, I think are more uh, tuned into to what we're doing, and uh, and we to them. Uh, and, uh, and it's also a much younger, uh, environment. I don't mean, uh, physically it's the, uh, uh, you know, the industry is, is younger and, mm -hmm. uh, the companies not are younger. Not oversaturated as much. Well, it's not oversaturated and they're, they're not, you know, huge legacy companies that you can't get a foothold in because they're, you know, multinational. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you talk to a lot of the companies and they're like, say they may still be a big company, but they're not that big. Uh, and uh, and a lot of smaller companies, so you can you can get in and and talk to the owner, uh, or you're talking you know you're you're only one person away from the owner as opposed to you know fifteen, uh, you know you, you got a big national company you'd never talk to the to the president of the company, but uh, in most of the overland companies most of the van companies absolutely you're you're probably talking to the owner of the company when you're at these shows and if you're not might be his son, in my case. Yeah, uh, that's where so. we met you, is at More Expo. Yes, so. yeah. Yep, very cool. Had dinner and some, a few cocktails and enjoyed that expo. It was nice oh, to yeah. unwind at the end of the day, though. That was a, Those were long days. Yes, yeah. actually yeah. they were. and uh, But it was nice. I enjoyed, uh, you know, the funny, we, the funny thing is, uh, you know, left California, got on the 40, and as soon as I could... I, uh, I think I was in, uh, made a left at Tucumcari and just took uh, county roads all the way to Springfield from uh, New Mexico, Tucumcari, New Mexico, all the way to Springfield. I just took secondary roads. And surprisingly, it didn't take any much longer. Uh, and it was so much prettier and so much more interesting than taking the 40 all the way to, uh, I forget, is it the 44 that goes up? Yeah. Uh, I forget. Yeah. And, uh, you know, which was just the way I went home. And it was so much more boring than the way I picked to go back up or to go to, uh, to Springfield. So, um, and I did that in Texas as well. The last time I went through, I, I did everything I could not to go to, to Dallas. So I went around Dallas by going on the secondary roads and uh, it was just beautiful. And uh, you know, you don't realize what's, you know, what is in Texas unless you take the secondary roads. You know, if you stay on the, on the 40 or the 10 or the 20, Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, you don't see much, you know, other than uh, triple highway or triple lane highways. So, you know, yeah, and a nice lot of people driving down. crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and well, that's, surprisingly, that's one of the it things really I take like. that much longer. Yeah, it doesn't, and that, and because it's because they're not that busy. They're not, you know, they're not busy at all. You, get on I, those you roads can drive and for an hour and not see another car. That's right. But don't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll all take secondary yeah. roads. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice. That's what 90% of the time we're on county roads or little country roads. You know, we stay away from the highways for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's you just, uh, you don't, you don't see half as much uh, unless you go on the country roads. Uh, yeah. And you see how these little towns is, and uh, you get to imagine, you know, what, you know, could I live in this little town? You know, and there's four houses, you know, and someone lives there. So it's, it's interesting to, uh, you know, to see how other people live. Oh, for sure. Try local foods and everything. That's all part of the journey. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Well, thank you of course, so much you got, for being you on the show. You got to hit Waffle Jerry. House, though. Oh yeah. If, oh, yeah. if you can't hit Waffle I mean, House, we don't have Waffle House, so <laughs> that's uh, that's my go-to. <laughs> they won't come to California. <laughs> Y'all didn't have Dunkin' Donuts before when I first got out there either, and I was very upset. Yeah, I, I, you know, sometimes there's just things that you you just gotta have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's one of them. <laughs> well, thanks again for being on the show, Jerry. We really enjoyed having you and you're an awesome person and we can't wait to hang out again. Well, I look forward to it and uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll be back at more. 
So uh, we'll be we'll be in, in Missouri in the in the Midwest again, and Try hopefully at the end of the year, uh, if we go to the East Coast, we'll we'll be stopping in. Yeah, come to rendezvous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. All right. Bye, everybody.